61A, lecture number five, announcements. Midterm one is on Monday the 14th. That's a week from Monday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific time. The format is that it will be a web-based exam of short answer and multiple choice questions that mostly involves you completing the implementation for various short functions. The content covered is sections 1.1 through 1.6 of composing programs, excluding the section on Newton's method and the section on decorators. We will use video proctoring in the following way. We're not going to watch you live take your exam. Instead, you'll record your screen in your head. You can do this on the computer you're taking the exam using Zoom or Loom. We'll give you some instructions. Or you could use some other recording technology such as setting up your phone next to you and taking a video that records your screen in your head that way. Whatever works for you is fine with us. If you look in the syllabus under the exam proctoring section, you'll see that there is a form for requesting an exemption from the proctoring policy. If you do not want to be recorded while you take your exam, you can ask that we don't record you by filling out this form by next Thursday. Otherwise, we will expect you to record your screen and your head. We will only use these videos for investigating academic integrity cases, and I hope there will be very few of those. We're offering multiple options because internet connectivity varies. If you have a strong internet connection, then the service called Loom is really nice. It just records your screen and your head to the cloud. You don't have to have any local storage. It runs pretty smoothly. Most people didn't have a problem with it when we used it last spring. If you do have internet connectivity problems, then it's better to make a local recording. Zoom can do that. It doesn't need to communicate outside. It can just make a local recording on your computer, and then you can submit that later. We'll give you some instructions for how to record your exam videos with minimal fuss using these various technologies. If for some reason your recording fails during the exam, please continue to take the exam the recording is not the most important part. Your responses are the most important part. We may still score your exam even if the video recording fails for some reason. This is the regular time for the exam. Nobody's going to take it earlier than this. But you might take it later if you're in a time zone where this is in the middle of the night. As stated in the course policies, if this exam begins after 10 p.m. and before 7 a.m., then you can request an alternate time where you can actually take it when you're awake. Also, if you have a course conflict, we'll give you an alternate time. Please fill out this alternate time request form by next Thursday to request to take the exam at some other time than the regular time. What can you use during the exam? Well, we've prepared a study guide. The study guide is a two-page PDF containing all of the slides that I think are important from the course so far. This does include slides from today's lecture and from all the lectures before today. By the end of today's lecture, we'll have covered all the material that will appear on the midterm. There are still two lectures next week. They're a little bit on the shorter side and mostly about review and learning how to use these ideas together. In addition, you can create a one-page, two-sided sheet of notes for yourself but you have to make it. You can't use one that's shared with 30 of your best friends. And you can use scratch paper. If you don't want a physical sheet of notes, but you want an electronic document containing your notes, you must use a Google Doc. You cannot use any other kind of electronic document. You can use cs61a.org. You can use the 61a Piazza. You can use code.cs61a.org. What's that? That's an interpreter. So you are welcome to try things out during the exam. If you don't remember what 2 plus 2 is, this will tell you. You can also use tutor.cs61a.org. What's that? That's the online Python tutor that draws environment diagrams. So it's a good idea to try out both of these tools before the exam because they will be available to you. But that's it. You can't use text files on your computer. You can't use your own terminal. You got to stay in your browser, use these tools. You cannot leave cs621a.org to search Google or search Reddit or search Stack Overflow. And most importantly, you cannot communicate or collaborate with anyone else, either other students in the course or people who took the course before or your parents who are just there to help you out because they're so nice 
that's not allowed. You have to take this exam yourself. So that's what's going on with the midterm. I'll have more to say about it next week. I've updated the syllabus, which is here, with information about grading in the course. This section used to just say, information coming soon, but now it's here. We score everybody out of 300 points, and what letter grade you get is determined in advance. So if you get all 300 points, you get an A+. Is it really true that you have to get everything right? Well, almost. There are sort of 10 or so extra credit points throughout the semester, so it's possible to get higher than 300 points. But yeah, to get an A+, you basically have to do everything right. To get an A, you could skip the hardest question on every exam as long as you got everything else right, you'd get an A. And here's the rest of the schedule. This conversion from points to letter grades is fixed. In the past, I would say something like, well, I might adjust it at the end. And several semesters ago, I used to make adjustments, but now I've figured out what the threshold should be. And so I'm not going to make any adjustments. These thresholds will not be adjusted, up or down, based on student performance. You could all get A's, you could all get D's. It's really up to you. You may have heard rumors about the fabled bin shift. It's not happening this semester. This is the conversion. Typically, about 60% of students taking the course for a letter grade get a B plus or higher. I have high hopes that you will collectively do much better than that. But I do want to give you some guidance about how grading usually works. You can find lots more information online if you dig around. Exams do matter for your grade. And one way to prepare for exams is to attend the exam prep section tomorrow, this Friday starting at 2.10 p.m. Here's the link. No one knows quite how long this will be. Probably will end around 3.30 or so. If you have to leave at 3, you'll have seen most of it. The point of the exam prep section is to hear from a TA about strategies for solving exam questions and to see some example past exam questions. If you're watching this on Thursday, don't forget homework is due. And lab two is a little funny because Monday's a holiday. So while the lab is still due Monday, like it would always be, we're holding the lab orientations this Friday instead. So here are all the links. We had to cancel one of the orientations for less experienced students that normally happens at seven because the folks who run that are not available. But we still have four different orientations for you to pick from. While the lab is not due on Friday, I think you should just finish it on Friday. Then you can focus on the hog project. The project has been released. It's due next Friday. You need to complete and submit phase one by Tuesday to receive the checkpoint. That's one point out of 25. If you miss it, that's not catastrophic, but it really is a good idea to finish phase one by Tuesday at the latest, maybe even sooner, so that you can finish the whole thing by Thursday, in which case you get an early submission bonus point. If you haven't found a partner and you would like one, please fill out this partner request form by this Friday. And we'll pair you up on Saturday and send you an email with the contact information for your partner. Finally, we do have one-on-one -on -one informal advising sessions with course tutors available Friday, Saturday, and Monday. Look on the office hours appointments page for sessions where the location is advising instead of the usual location of online. Those are for advising. Sign up for those. You can ask about whatever you want. And last but not least, please fill out the week two survey. This anonymous survey lets you tell us how we could improve the course. And we're focusing on things that we can change very soon, such as the length of tutorials, how we run the lecture Q&A, stuff like that. So whether things are going smoothly or not, we'd like to hear your feedback. This is anonymous, it's not required, but we'd really appreciate it, and uh, I'd like you to respond by Monday. Past recordings of orientations, Lab 2, which is running on Friday instead of Monday, exam prep, which is happening on Friday, all of these will be recorded and placed in this directory so that if you don't get to go to them, you can watch them later. And finally, we'll have a Q&A about this lecture on Friday morning at 9, 10 a.m. One more note about this lecture. 
is that I made a mistake in last lecture. I'd left out one of the videos from the lecture playlist when I originally posted it, and I didn't add it in until about 9 a.m. on Wednesday. This was the video about lambda expressions. So depending on when you watched lecture four, you either saw that video, which was supposed to be there, or you didn't, and perhaps were horribly confused when I used these lambda expressions without telling you what they were. Well, just to make sure everybody sees the lambda expressions video, I've put it in this playlist as well. So if you get to the lambda expression video and you think, oh, I've seen this before, just last lecture, well, maybe you did. Depends on when you watched it. And if you've seen it before, you can just skip over it. It really is identical. There's only one video about lambda expressions. It just is in playlists for both lecture four and lecture five to make sure everybody saw it because of my mistake. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Today we investigate how the mechanics of higher order functions can be expressed and tracked using environment diagrams. And the whole reason we use environment diagrams is to understand how higher order functions really work. 